for that noisy size. Good afternoon, church. Countless times in the Bible, God, God has made the impossible possible. And today I just want to talk to you about different ways as to why God chooses to intervene for us in miraculous ways. The first reason is God wants to make himself known to others. When God does the impossible, others see his power and there's potential for them to believe in him. For, for, for instance, when Daniel was thrown in the di- into the lion's den. Could we please turn our Bibles to Daniel chapter 6 verse 16. While we turn there, I'm just going to give us some quick context as to what's happening. So Daniel, so Daniel lived, lived an ideal life. There was no fault in him. He tried to live the life that God wanted, wanted us to. But people, they were jealous of him. They tried to find fault, find, find fault in him. And the only way they could find him doing something wrong was if it was in the God he worshipped. It was if it was concerning God. So what they did was that they made it a law that anyone that worships, that worships anything and anyone except the king would be thrown into the lion's den. But Dan refused this. He refused to worship anyone and to pray to anyone except God. And so he was thrown into the lion's den. I'll start reading. Verse 16. So the king gave command and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lord, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very, very early in the morning and went in haste, to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, has he been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angels and shut the lions' mouths, so that they have not hurt me, because I was found innocent before him. And also, king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was ex- exceedingly glad with him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no injury whatsoever was found on him, because he believed in his God. Amen? Amen. And then the, give, the king gave command, and they brought those men who had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, their, and their wives, and the lions overpowered them, and broke all their bones in pieces, before they ever came to the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote to all the, to all peoples, to all peoples, all nations and languages that dwell on all the earth. Peace be multiplied with you. I make a decree in every dominion of my kingdom. Men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues, and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Amen. God sent an angel to shut them out of the lions. The beasts were famished because the, the enemies of Daniel were thrown in afterwards. So it's not like the lions wouldn't have eaten Daniel anyway. These lions, they were hungry. They were, they were starved. But God made the impossible possible that day by shutting the mouths when Daniel was thrown in. As a result, the, as a result, the king issued a decree that the God of Daniel must be revered throughout his kingdom. In, in, in school, they will teach in school in religious in religious studies. They will teach us about lots of different religions: Sikh, Sikhism, Buddhism, Islam, a lot of different religions. And they serve, they have many different beliefs and belief in many different gods. But when we see God perform miracles like this, it makes our God known to be far superior to any other God. Amen. Amen. Another reason why God chooses to perform miracles in our lives is to take us deeper in our faith. Whenever God moves supernaturally in our lives, it becomes a building block of faith, a faith of our faith. It strengthens our faith. 
and leads us to seek him more. When we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, what he has done for us, and what he's still doing, this then builds our faith. The opposite of faith is not fear, as fear is faith, but it's just faith in a lie. But instead, we must have faith in God. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, For we live by faith and not by sight. If we want to grow in faith, we must keep our eyes fixed on God at all times. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 also says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So to, if we want to grow our faith, we must, keep, we must keep studying and diving deep into the word of God. Amen. Amen. Another reason why God chooses to perform miracles in our lives is so that we can experience him in new ways. Ideally, ideally, what you think is impossible in most scenarios or cases is something that you've not experienced before. But when God makes it happen, it becomes, it becomes an opportunity for you to experience God in new ways. If you're not used to seeing God working miracles, and then suddenly you do, your relationship with him will change greatly. Now, instead of a God that you've read about in the Bible, you are now, you are now able to experience the power of your God in your life firsthand. Another reason so that God can receive the glory. Does anyone know of any circumstances or anything, any times in the Bible where God has made the impossible possible for us? Or just in the Bible? Throughout the Bible, God did impossible things, such as parting the Red Sea and bringing down the walls of Jericho, even feeding the hungry, Dr. Manu said. These were all brought in glory. Even today, even today, when God resolves an impossible situation in people's lives, it glorifies them. God is actively working on us to fulfill great purposes. And in the process of getting us where we ought to be, we must be ready to witness him. We must be sorry. We must be ready to witness him making the impossible possible because that is how he operates. If you're not used to see Matthew chapter 15 verse 31 says, So the crowd wondered, when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled healthy, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they all glorified the God of Israel. When God performs miracles in our lives, it's not only for us, but so he can also receive glory. Amen. Amen. Another reason why God performs miracles in our lives is as expression of his love and his compassion for us. Many miracles and acts of God are directly related to the love and mercy he has for his creation. Jesus' healing of the sick illustrates that he, cares, that he cares for us. He cares for the affliction and challenges that people face in this life, as this life is not easy. John 10.10 10, The enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But I have come to give you life, and life abundantly. Do not, do not ever fall into the lie that God is not thinking about our needs. He loves us and he wants us to thrive. Every move of God is a move of his love. And lastly, another reason why he chooses, why he chooses to perform miracles in our lives is to provide and to protect. The man of God that provided the manner that God provided in the wilderness is a perfect example of his provision. Later, Jesus then says that he is the bread of life, and he equated himself as the very thing that we need to sustain ourselves in this world. Even, even before our physical needs, we need Jesus. We need to meet our spiritual needs. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We can just give another round of applause for Daniel. We're so proud of you, I must say. When I was young, I would not have had the boldness to, to speak and, and come to a stage and, and preach like that. So well done to you for doing it. Let's clap for him again. He said quite a lot of good things in that message and um, I'm just going to round up some of the things that he said. I think, I think the main thing we're trying to get today is that we know that God is sovereign over everything. Daniel mentioned Daniel in the Bible and how God shut the mouth of lions and if God can shut the mouth of a lion, if God can part a Red Sea, if God can make the way where there's no way, what can't God do in our lives? And we all know the answer is a resounding no. There's nothing he cannot do in our lives if we just believe. 
Um, and I think that's the first thing we're trying to get um, today. And then I think the second thing, as we said earlier, is um, Daniel mentioned that God performs miracles and does signs and wonders as an expression of his love and compassion for us. You see, with everything that God does, he does with a purpose. But everything he, also, everything he does, he also does from his nature, which is to love us. And um, it's very important to understand that um, uh, he sees things that we don't necessarily see. So we must trust him even when it's hard. And I'm going to leave with a um, passage from the book of Ephesians. Um, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 18 says, And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how deep, um, how high is God's love for us. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all fullness of life and power that comes from God. So, um, I just, as I was praying um, for today, um, I was really asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want to, what else do you want to say to your people? Is there a prophetic word? Is there something that someone needs to capture this morning? And um, I was praying and meditating, and I really feel that um, there are people in this room who is going through, or who are going through what they may seem as an impossible situation. Um, they may be going through something um, which has been going on for years and years and years and years and you are trusting the Lord but you're maybe struggling or you're maybe wondering, God, when are you going to actually make this way? I'm, I'm trusting in you, I'm putting my hope in you. But this situation, um, and I feel the Lord saying that there's a health situation perhaps in maybe your, your life or fam a close family member is going through something really difficult. Um, I thought the Lord is saying this morning that um, he has heard your prayers. As um, we read in um, Exodus, um, the Israelites were in Egypt for 400 years. But God still said, I have heard your prayers. And every prayer we pray, though we may not see the boulder moving, though we may not see this obstacle moving straight away, God has heard your prayer, and, I, and we really want you to. We really want to encourage you to keep on pressing on in faith. You, we have to have faith with everything we do. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he who comes to him must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, my encouragement to someone here this morning is to hold on to the Lord. Hold on to the Lord. Um, as I said. Daniel also mentioned in his message that faith is the opposite of faith is not necessarily not having faith and I think that was very powerful because if we worry you have faith if you are scared you have faith it's just not in God it's in a lie if you're worried that how is God, how am I going to um, pay the bills or is this sickness going to go or is this challenge going to leave and you're saying, I don't think it's going to happen, I'm so worried. You have believed in the enemy. You have believed in Satan and you have put your faith in him. And God is challenging us this morning to say, no, do not listen to the accuser. Do not listen to Satan. Listen to me. Keep, my, keep your eyes fixed on the Lord and you will see the salvation of God. So our encouragement this morning is when you pray, continue to trust. Don't give up. Pray without ceasing. And in God's time, which is always the perfect time, you will see his salvation. Amen. Amen. So um, I think that's the message for this morning. Um, I believe we have um, phrase is going to